In this video, I'm going to be making a live edge bench, except it's not really live edge because live edge slabs are expensive and I don't want to pay that much. So instead, I'm going to be using 2x8s and I'm just going to try to make them look like they're live edge. And obviously, one of these 2x8s isn't going to be wide enough for a whole bench, so I'm going to have to glue these together at some point in the video. And to do that, I'm going to need to take off the round over so that I can get a tight joint. And I was going to take the round over off at the table saw, but these are such long pieces that it was easier just to use my circular saw. And now I'm going to add a fake live edge to each of these pieces with an angle grinder. And this is something that I've done before on my 5 gifts video from last year, that live edge uh, step stool I made. Um, but this time I'm going to be doing it a little bit different. I'm adding tape to the edge that I'm about to cut with the angle grinder. And then hopefully that way, once I stain the edge, I can just rip off the tape and it'll leave a nice sharp live edge line. Also, as I'm carving in this edge, uh, I'm paying attention to which way the blade direction is spinning. And then I'm readjusting so that the blade is always pushing in on the tape. The blade is going away from me instead of towards me so that it doesn't pull the tape off. And now I'm going to stain that carved edge just so that it looks a little bit more like live edge. Um, I'm using what I had on hand, which was this dark walnut gel stain. And I think it looks just a little bit off. It's a little too dark, I think. I maybe would have went with something just a tad lighter if I were to do this again. But it still turned out pretty good. And now before I carve in the edge on the other piece... Uh, I am just going to match up these boards and mark where I want the live edge on the other piece to be so that they match up once they get glued back together. Because I don't know if I explained this earlier, I'm actually carving in the inside live edge right now because I want this bench to look like it's like cracked down the middle, if that makes sense. So I got the two sides of the live edge to match up pretty good, and now I just need to glue them together. But you can see there's a little bit of a gap in between those. The, the boards are a little warped, so they don't go together quite right. And I wanted to join these together so that they'd fit together better, but I was afraid I was going to mess up the live edge that I had just carved to perfectly fit together. So I kind of just forced them into place with clamps, and it worked fine. Uh, the glue joint was still pretty tight. So this next part is going to be a little bit weird. I want to bow tie joint that live edge crack together. So I'm going to be using a biscuit joiner to make some fake bow ties to put together the fake live edge crack that I just made. So right now I'm cutting a bunch of splines that can fit into the kerf of a biscuit joiner. And I'm using a 4 inch hole saw bit and a jig uh, to make those splines. I don't actually cut all the way through with the hole saw bit. Um, if I did that, then these pieces would just fly all over my shop. So instead I cut just shy of all the way through, and then I can easily break them apart and clean them up with the disc sander. And by the way, making biscuit joiner biscuits like this is not my original idea. I stole this from John Heiss. So if you want to see how he does that, I'll put a link up to his video with the card. Now I need to make a jig for my biscuit joiner to make these fake uh, bow ties. Or I guess they're not really bow ties, more like stitches. But anyways, first I'm going to set up a straight edge guide. Um, and then I'm going to glue on a 15 degree block directly onto my uh, biscuit joiner. And I'm going to ride that 15 degree block along the straight edge. And then I'm just going to cut a bunch of slots at 15 degrees going one way. And then 15 degrees going the other way to make like some crosses. Also, I'm not just like freehand guessing the spacing on these uh, bow ties. I have some little marks along that straight edge guide that I can line up with the biscuit joiner so that these are equally spaced. And also, I when I cut these slots, because you can set the depth with a biscuit joiner, uh, near the beginning and the end of the crack, I made like smaller bow ties, and then towards the middle, I made them bigger.
So once I cut and fill all those 15 degree blocks going one way, I'm going to flip my biscuit joiner over to the other side of that 15 degree block and cut the other half of each of those stitches. Also, before someone comments it, I know that these stitches have like no strength at all. I just thought that these would look cool, and this was something that I wanted to try with that wine gift box that I made with my brother a while ago. In that video, I was using the biscuit joiner in a bunch of weird ways, just trying stuff out. And this is one of the ideas I had, it just didn't really fit into the video. So I'm trying it out here. You'll probably notice an awkward space where I should have had another stitch there. And I left that gap there so that I can make a miter turn to make the legs of this bench. And I thought it would look weird if I had the legs turn right like halfway through one of the stitches. So this is the part of the video where I try to burn my way through half this miter with a dull blade and then filled my shop with smoke. But I change out the blade and then I finished all these miters. And since my miter saw doesn't reach all the way, I finish the, each of these cuts with a pull saw. Now I want to try another new thing with my biscuit joiner to join together these miters. I didn't have any clamps to go the whole length of the bench, so I glued on some blocks that I could clamp to. I want this live edge on the outside to look a little bit more wavy and it would take a long time to take off that much material with just my angle grinder. So I'm going to start off with a jigsaw, then add tape, and then use my angle grinder. Lastly, I'm going to finish this bench with some shellac. I'm sure a lot of people are going to suggest that I add a bottom stretcher to connect the two legs. And that is something that I considered, 
but ultimately decided against just because there's no racking and the bench is plenty strong on its own as is. But in the future, if it does start to rack or there's any instability, I guess I'll have to add one. But at the moment, I would prefer not to because it doesn't really go with the design that I'm going for.